this is our best case scenario for today. So we are going to review a real use case. Uh, we'll do overview of Airflow and Docker, and as well, we'll do create a three bucket. We'll get uh, some information about AWS S3, how it works, and uh, for, for what purposes it, should, it could be used. As well, uh, we'll, um, we'll work with uh, Airflow uh, DAC, and I'll introduce you the concept of DAC, which will download raw data, parse this data, and publish this data to S3. Uh, once written, we'll try to local test it, and uh, if okay, we'll try to trigger the DAC to finalize the whole process by one click. Uh, so let's go further. So let's say, uh, let's say we have um, a use case uh, in case we'll uh, receive uh, the requests to, uh, to parse uh, the data, which will look like this. So this is a sample. So, uh, Initially, initially, this data is provided via the file with the, with the sample. And uh, in future, the data uh, will become live. Uh, so uh, it will be constantly updated. So, uh, and it should be retrieved from S3 as zip archive. So uh, as now we have uh, the data sample to, and, uh, to test and to implement uh, the, the solution. Uh, and uh, as a target, we, uh, we need to uh, download this data to S3, parsed and cleaned for sure. Uh, and the purpose to prepare email lists for counter-propaganda actions. So, uh, Finally, they will need these emails and maybe some additional information. Um, well, uh, let's take a look on the schema that I prepared. So we will have a raw data source, uh, which will uh, be downloaded by um, downloader. This is the Python. Uh, operator or Python functionality that uh, is triggered as a iFlow task. Uh, and uh, one more question on it. Uh, actually, uh, I'll ask you to answer these three questions. So uh, do you have experience with Docker, iFlow, and Kubernetes to uh, help me understand uh, which words I should choose? Okay, then um, I prepared the link. Let me find it. Oh. Yeah. Somewhere here. Yeah. So uh, please go to. Just a second. Yeah, so I will uh, add uh, to the chat, uh, mentit.com. Oh, thank you. I, I can see uh, someone have already uh, voted. So it appears like everything is okay with the link and it's not needed. Anyway, we can edit. Well, thank you for your answers. I can see the the picture now better. So I think uh, we don't have 
to have a lot of experience with Kubernetes, just uh, general understanding what is it. Okay, then let's return to our scheme. So uh, these tasks should be run inside the Kubernetes cluster with the container orchestrator. And uh, so the downloader task should pull the, da the data, the processor should process this data, publishers should publish this data to the S3. Uh, okay, then uh, let's return back to our uh, use case. Oh, so what we can see from this sample, we can see that uh, it appears like we have a, something like top here as a separator. Uh, so this is the first group. This is the second group. I can see the semicolon here. So once, once received, I'll need to parse it, uh, split by space. Split, uh, split by top, split by space, uh, get the email as a unique identifier, uh, parse uh, the first name, the second name, uh, and try to parse the rest. I can see 29 here. I think that this is a uh, years uh, of, of, of the, this person, but uh, I can see that this information is pretty much outdated. So it's origin from 2019. And we have uh, education here and we have uh, the career, I guess, here. And I can see that we have missing part here. So that one more tab should be here and the link to, to URL, uh, link to the profile. So uh, it appears like we'll need to try to parse, we'll need to, uh, parse the email and try to parse uh, the rest. Uh, so what else? Okay, uh, let's go to uh, our DAC. So what is DAC? DAC is directed a cycle graph. That means that uh, from task to task to downstream task, uh, uh, it should uh, have a direct uh, point uh with no cycles inside uh so uh why uh why we use uh um uh, iflow and DAC for this purpose it will help us in, in in the future to extend our functionality to uh run it uh with the uh, with the defined uh, schedule and we can we can increase uh, and scale up uh, a lot. We can uh, even more, we can use uh, custom operators that we can uh, write by our own. Uh, we can use a Python operators uh, with the callable functions. We can use a bash operator uh, with the bash command to execute as well. We can use our flow, uh, hooks, which can help us to connect to uh, the data I will show you later with the S3. So let's return to uh, the requirements. Uh, so what we'll need to do, we'll need to get the data from file. Uh, so uh, as for now, this file is here. Uh, after after uh, the testing and validation is complete, uh, the mm, the data will be provided to the S3. So in this case, we'll uh, just uh, uncomment this section and uh, 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 we will get the file from S3. Uh, after that, we'll need to parse uh, email, first name and last name, Try to parse year, years and date uh, years. I think we can even ignore years as it um, it is uh, invalid at the moment. We can try to parse school, university, parse career, parse URL, and finally we should uh, output this data to to S three. So uh, to have uh, this uh, um, to have um, 
To do that, we'll need to have uh, buckets. So I've already created one, uh, but just a second. I will change it back. Okay. Um, so uh, initially, it will it will took some time for you uh, once you create S three uh, to manage all the uh, permissions and roles to uh, so. For, for the purpose of this demo, I did create the own bucket and uh, um, and applied all the the user and the IM role uh, that needed to uh, to uh, publish the data inside of it. Uh, if we'll have time uh, uh, once uh, we'll finish with the main theme. Uh, I'll show you how to create it and uh, how to. Um, okay, then uh, let's move forward. So uh, the very first task is the starter. So this one will prepare the environment for us. Uh, so it will um, create the input and the output directory inside the uh, the a duck directory. So this L00 is the, the duck name. So let's uh, let's uh, execute uh, starter. As you can see, I'm using uh, Docker for this port and for this purpose for local, local testing. So uh, the starter did path. I can see that two folders uh, were created. And I can see that uh, it will uh, recreate the there if exists. If not, it, it will create one. Uh, so um, uh, if we'll need to download the archive from S3, we can use uh, Boto3 uh, or uh, or um, uh, S3 hook. As you can see, here is a hard coded access a key and access ID. This is a temporary credentials. And uh, finally, this should be added to Airflow connections to be hided from, from everywhere. Uh, for now, we'll use both of three to uh, upload and download file. Okay, what, what we have now instead of downloader, we have a simple bash command, will, which um, uh, will uh, which copy the uh, raw data to uh, input uh, directory. So let's do it. So uh, as you can see that uh, the command was successfully marked, the, the bash operator uh, um, finally did his job and uh, we can see that this file appeared here okay let's go to processor uh, so uh, here we use a custom operator that uh, i did uh, add it so uh, what uh, what it should uh, do uh, execute this is the start point the, the, which will uh, run the write data on the get JSON. I decided to use uh, um, JSON as a, a data storage as for now. Uh, maybe finally I'll uh, move to some other options like uh, pandas for for some kind of of uh, of processing and. Uh, Maybe in future we'll need to add uh, a parquet as an output and not a, a CSV. Uh, maybe uh, this could be reviewed for uh, for um, performance questions. But for now, uh, the question is to have a working solution because uh, this is. Um, in case uh, we will uh, use this uh, use case, uh, so th this should be an urgent request. Okay, so uh, while the get JSON will um, 
will get the raw data list. Uh, once done, we'll do execute prepare JSON. Uh, so uh, we have a CSV type, uh, type mail. Uh, so we'll do split the line uh, and uh, get the email first name and last name, as I said. After that, we'll try to have uh, all other information. And if error, uh, we just need a fast email uh, list. So now we'll output it with the nonce inside uh, and uh, we'll add uh, to broken records for further analysis. And finally, we'll have we'll have um, uh, a dict uh, with the email as a key. Okay, once done uh, as well, uh, we have here a handle unknowns, which will write the broken records to CSV. And we'll have a write uh, data functionality, which will write the, uh, the parsed data to CSV using uh, CSV module. As we can see that, uh, uh, we should run it for sure. Yes, this is done. So it's wonderful. Is it working? Yeah. So we have a list of uh, we, we have a, a CSV file with a uh, inserted inside of it uh, the, the whole needed information. Maybe uh, we'll need to clarify whether they need to, uh, to have only emails and maybe we can write uh, uh, and we can, we can discuss with the uh, requester the, the right way they need to, to consume this data. So uh, once done, we can publish this data to S3. And we'll have um, this data already here, yeah. Uh, so, Initially, we did finish with the request. For sure, we'll need to do some uh, refactoring. Uh, we'll need to, uh, for sure, change uh, this piece of code and maybe, uh, maybe some other improvements. But for now, we, we have a uh, working uh, deck that we can uh locally test uh, using the docker um, um, functionality okay then um let's go back to our presentation mm -hmm. okay uh, some more information about s3 uh, but before that, I'd like to gather one more time the info. So, So please uh, vote.
oh, good experience. Uh, actually, I I uh, hadn't do it by my own in production environment. I did test it uh, at uh, AWS trainings, and I'd like to uh, add the like formation for uh, the S3 data lake that we do have in uh, my current project. Uh, thank you for the information. So um, let's wait a couple seconds more. Okay, I think this is enough. Uh, well, what does? Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. So, in case you have a general knowledge, what is data workhouse and uh, what is S3, you know, for sure that S3 is a default uh, storage for data lake. Uh, it's pretty uh, useful for data engineer uh, to maintain, to, to pull the data, to, uh, uh, to download the data, to uh, add um, uh, access and management control, uh, to uh, make your workarounds, to gather the logs, to uh, find out the, the best way to understand who is consuming your data, to manage this access, etc. So I think this general information is uh, known for you. Uh, so uh, to this comparing, uh, so for uh, the purposes of, of uh, our need, we don't have for sure uh, data uh, like here, we have uh, just uh, one output, not fully cleared files, file, but uh, in future in case we'll receive much more such um, uh, such uh, requests with the different data sources. Uh, finally, it can transform to some kind of data lake or even data warehouse um, that could uh, help a lot in uh, working with a huge amount of data as uh, we can treat all, all the graphics or all the, the bucket as a, a one storage. We can uh, interact with it using uh, Athena and other uh, services. So uh, in case we'll do apply um, um, a group crawler to get the uh, description and metadata from this uh, storage will output this data to uh, glue or catalog and once done we can apply uh, Athena query uh, for it as well we can do uh, visualization with the quick site and uh, as I mentioned we can use uh, Athena and as well, we can, uh, for this use case, we can add uh, some kind of, of uh, a storage for outdated, outdated data in case we'll, uh, we'll grow and uh, this uh, will need it to be done. And uh, for metrics, uh, the custom Z collector can be added or um, whatever tool you need to collect these metrics. Uh, okay, then, um, so I think that uh, in case you need a cost-effective uh, solution, uh, the data lake will be the, the, the perfect one for you. Uh, so uh, uh, you, for scheme, you'll you'll receive a scheme on read for data warehouse. You have a scheme on write. Uh, for performance, uh, for sure, for uh, 
foreign uh, data warehouse solution is uh, better for, for, for this purpose. Um, and uh, for data lake, it's less performance. Uh, and uh, for data quality, for sure, data lake uh, will include both of the raw data, uh, the data with them. So it is not highly uh, cleaned data that uh, is uh, pleasant to work for, for business analysts with. Okay, what else we have here? Um, actually, what can I add here? Uh, I covered uh, close to uh, everything that I'd like to cover from the code perspective. So uh, we do have a DAC for now that will be triggered by uh, um, by IFLOW schedule and could be executed with the, so we can add here uh, schedule interval to, um, to run this, uh, um, this DAC periodically. Uh, we can add the whole amount of different configurations here. Um, and yeah, uh, the note, that all the executable code, uh, you should try to keep this code outside of the DAC file because the airflow will uh, scrap all the uh, DACs folder uh, periodically and it's recommended as a best practice to uh, store this code inside of, of uh, utils or, or uh, other locations for custom operators. Uh, what else could be added here? Oh yeah. Uh, so for uh, for working with uh, data much bigger than this, uh, I, I am using big data tools. Um, extension for IntelliJ and for working with uh, uh, with um, AWS uh, services, I'm using AWS toolkit. So uh, you'll need to add the access to credentials to your um, AWS credentials. And once done, you can have access to S3 and the whole variety of other services. Uh, for me, it's uh, pretty much useful to work uh, with, uh, with the S3. So via this, I can create um, a bucket. So let's call it, I don't know, demo. Uh, yeah, I had somewhere a notification and uh, a reminder that uh, um, I should not include uh, underscores. Uh, and as well uh, for publishing, if needed, um, in case you need to trigger uh, one of the, let's say, downstream consumers, uh, the SQS, uh, the uh, simple Q uh, service uh, could be could be applied uh, for. Uh, so let's say you do uh, publish uh, the the file to S3, and you need somehow to. Um, inform the customer that the data is ready for, for his uh, analysis. Uh, the SQS uh, could be added here. Um, and yeah, and returning back to our demo. 
So yeah, we have our uh, bucket uh, as for now his, uh, um, this bucket is um, public uh, and to modify we can uh, we can go to AWS console and find out this bucket. Yes, so we do have uh, the bucket. Uh, we can configure access points. We can uh, configure the life cycle rules. So once uh, some period of ret some retention period path, we can uh, uh, reduce uh, cost for S3, and you can change the S3 type. Uh, finally, you can use a, a strict glacier, which will allow you to reduce um, costs a lot. Uh, but uh, in case you need to uh, return back to, to this data, it will uh, time consuming to um, request this data back. Data back. Uh, so once you uh, have your um, uh, S3 bucket running, uh, you'll have the, uh, the whole variety of metrics here. Um, maybe not a whole variety. I think uh, some uh, configurations could be added and some uh, additional metrics could be output here as well. For permissions, so uh, for demo purposes, um, this uh, bucket, uh, so the objects inside from the inside of this bucket uh, could be public. So it's pretty pretty much important to set up everything clear because security is a, a very important concern. Uh, but uh, this theme is much bigger than the time that was provided. Uh, okay. Okay, um, uh, for the bucket, the encryption could be provided uh, as well. Uh, the, the bucket to support tagging in, in case you'll need to tag some groups of, of uh, information, you can use this feature. Um, what else? I think this is it from this perspective as well. For uh, the IFL deck, unfortunately, I cannot able to show you at the moment how this trigger looks like uh, because uh, the very um, end of my preparation, something went wrong and uh, uh, the rebuild of, of the container does not uh, help me. So uh, finally, uh, yeah, I decided just uh, uh, so. Uh, the the list of DAGs for um, could appear here, and uh, it could be triggered manually from from this uh, lane as, as well. Uh, the connections could be added here as uh, well as uh, users as uh, security policies, uh, etc. Okay, I will check whether I covered everything. It appears like uh, uh, I am finished with with my um, uh, presentation. Maybe you have some questions so far, so I can uh, try to answer it. You hey guys, if uh, someone has a question, please unmute and ask. Uh, yeah, uh, additionally, I just remember that um, for uh, this uh, this part, um, it's needed much more data, and this data should be structured, and this data should be in parquet format, 
uh, and it should be cleaned up. And after that, it could be uh, treated as a uh, lake formation and it can help in access management and uh, other uh, other stuff. Yeah. So okay. if I... we have we have question in, in chat. Could you look at the chat, please? Uh, yes, Sebastian, that is correct. Uh, but it's a very interesting um, question because uh, you can assign uh, the resources uh, directly to uh, each and every task. So you can, uh, in case this task is not uh, resource um, dependent, you can uh, scale down a bit. And if needed, you can scale up if you need more capacity to to uh, uh, to increase the performance. Any questions else? Yeah, we'll have one for for one task. Okay, looks like no questions. Um, so I uh, I would like to say thank you.